Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them. The penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor, they put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spread that day. The word of the Lord. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I hear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even You spread the table before me in the sight of my host. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman has caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such woman. So what do you say? They say, said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he strengthened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone to her at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning from the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. This evening, a night time for us all, said Pope Francis in his recent message to all of us. And during this darkness, the Lord is calling us to faith, to come to Him and trust in Him. Brothers and sisters, the responsorial psalm that we have for today has beautifully captured this needed response of faith. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Trust is the antidote to fear. I believe it was the same trust that made St. Paul profess these words with conviction. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? These are the words from a man whose life was struck by God's forgiving love. A love that ironically blinded him, making everything dark for him to make him see. So full and certain of himself and his convictions, Paul wanted to deliver justice, punishment, and death against the followers of Jesus. But he was delivered and justified. He was forgiven, given a new life. It was during his darkness that God made him see. Thus with conviction, he further proclaimed that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The readings for today speak of the same trust for God's deliverance. In the first reading, God delivered Susanna from the malice of the wicked man who falsely accused her with adultery. Susanna, a beautiful wife, inside and out, a God-fearing woman trained in the law of Moses, suffered darkness and nighttime in her life. Facing death in the hands of men for a scandal she was innocent of, God delivered and saved her through a young boy named Daniel. God never fails to touch the hearts of people to be there for us in our moments of darkness and pain. In the gospel, a woman caught in adultery, spiritually dead according to human measure, is about to die physically by stoning. Living in the darkness of sin and the cruelty of human condition, she lies helplessly waiting for her bitter end. But the Lord intervened and delivered her, not only from physical death, but also from spiritual death. And touched by his love, her life was never the same again from that moment on. Brothers and sisters, these are real stories of hope, a hope that is founded on God's ever-present love, providence, and interventions in moments of darkness and uncertainties. God comes by. He intervenes. He accompanies and speaks to us in our darkness, in our nighttime, in our experiences of pains, trials, and struggles, inviting and reminding us to trust, not only in the sense of holding on, but also in letting go, to abandon ourselves to the silent God whose silence purifies heals and saves. We only need to trust. As we face our personal, relational, national, and global darkness nowadays, we are faced with the precariousness of our life, of our status as pilgrims on this earth. Let us take time to reflect, to listen, and to take notice of the subtle movements of God deep in our hearts, now that our activity filled life has come to a stop. God could be wanting to deliver us from something. God could be wanting us to rediscover the true light of life which has dispelled the darkness of sin. God could be wanting us to re-embrace the true light which we have exchanged for some flickering lights. God could be delivering us from something now, brothers and sisters. Perhaps the silence that we noticed in our once busy streets and alleys, the silence that was once deafening to our busy ears, 
has invited us to listen to that quiet voice within us, patiently waiting to be heard, whispering something of great value for us as individuals, as a family, as a community. It is springtime, and perhaps the beautiful white and yellow daisies and chamomile flowers that blossom and disturb just above the ground invite us to humbly bend down before that truly beautiful that they humbly reflect. Perhaps the fresher air that is beginning to come back without us interfering, the air that we long to breathe outside, given our locked up condition, could be inviting us to appreciate and respect purity or to observe and understand healthy space and boundaries. And perhaps to ponder on our possible suffocating relationships, suffocating direction, control, and expertise. And maybe the emphasis on the required distance even within our homes, our family and community. God wants us to look back and humbly reflect on the way we have been dealing with each other. Why our brothers and sisters have been distancing and avoiding our presence, even our voice. It is night time and we are filled with so many emotions, mostly that of fear. Maybe this too is inviting us to reflect on the good, but nevertheless emotionless and feelingless gadgets that we use to communicate and channel our lofty ideas and well-said ideas for the good of all to see whether it already has replaced our personal encounter with each other as a family, as a community, as companions, as brothers and sisters of flesh and blood, thinking beings with emotions and feelings, needs and desires, and as persons and not robots. Brothers and sisters, it is evening. We are walking in the dark valley, but the Lord is at our side. He wants to deliver and save us because He loves us even when He is silent. Amen. In the midst of the crisis brought by COVID-19, let us ask the Father to accompany us as we go through the gloomy journey of the passion of His Son toward the glory of His resurrection. We humbly entreat the Lord and say, Father, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Father, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. That church leaders in the clergy may continue to give an example of hope and trust in the Lord to all the people who are overshadowed by fear in this time of crisis. We pray to the Lord. Father, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. For our continued safety and protection, especially for those who are directly facing this pandemic to serve the people, let us pray to the Lord. Father, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. That the leaders of the nations in all the communities may be united, we pray to the Lord. Father, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. For our doctors, nurses, medical staff, all people working in hospitals and clinics, all our medical specialists and researchers, and all those personnel in our Department of Health, and all those frontliners in this trying time, we pray to the Lord. Father, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. For our gratitude to the Lord for our frontliners, medical personnel's heroic service to our people in these difficult times, we pray to the Lord. 
Father, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. For all those serving in the front line in this pandemic, that they may receive the much needed material support and assistance to perform their duties as frontline personnel in this crisis situation, we pray to the Lord. Father, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Have mercy on us, Heavenly Father, and hear the petitions of these your people who are suffering because of this crisis that we are facing. In your loving mercy, let us reach through the fruits of our fasting and penance as we continue to wait for the triumph of your only begotten Son who suffers with us, he who is King forever and ever. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you, as the fruit of bodily penance, a joyful purity of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, that of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. And so, therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope and Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless you, Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power and the glory of Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter under my roof. For I say your word in my soul shall be. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Song number 16 from the PCF mobile app. Song number 16. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults and by following Christ, hasten our steps toward you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oratso Imperata, God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claim lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission, protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted that they may be restored to health soon, but that those who care for them grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. And all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We fly to your protection, the Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin Mary. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Saint Raphael the Archangel, Saint Rock, Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, Saint Pedro Alonso, the Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless us all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you.